illusions. <clears throat> they exist. And they're so cool. But people have always made illusions with creative mode and even mod. And that's cheating in my book. So I'm going to build the most over-the-top museum, design 10 of Minecraft's coolest illusions, and put them inside of it to create the ultimate brain obliteration experience. I think this is my most ambitious project yet. And just like that, all of the life on this island has been removed. I lied. I lied. Oh my god, my aim, my aim is amazing. I'm going to build the illusion museum on this island. Just because I thought it would look cool. And with everything cleared, I can finally begin building my magnum opus. Isn't it just absolutely beautiful? Yeah, who am I kidding? I actually built this. From most angles, this structure looks really weird. But if I just fly all the way over here and build up 162 blocks, it becomes an optical illusion. Yeah. Let's just ignore the hours of getting it to look right. Yeah, I thought the Penrose Triangle, the most iconic illusion of all time, would be the perfect entrance to my museum. Now, let's actually build the museum. Okay, assuming I didn't mess up any of my uh, calculations, this should be a perfect half sphere. Please tell me I didn't mess anything up. I'm looking around and there doesn't seem like there's anything wrong, but I'm not 100% sure. This is going to be the center of the museum, which is going to branch off to four different hallways, having increasingly cooler illusions in them. The illusions I'm building will be separated into three different levels, starting at the simplest possible illusion, increasing through level two, and ending with actual brain annihilation. Each hallway will be a separate level. And if you're wondering what that fourth hallway is for, the entire ocean is kind of in the way. So I made a nice little lookout scenic window thing. The last thing I need to do is decorate the central room of the museum. And I'm going to be using one of my favorite designs where you sort of place the logs alternating like this and it makes a really cool checkerboard pattern. Yes. Definitely didn't just want to do this design so I could strip logs. With the hub fully decorated, we can actually move on to building illusions. <laughs> to make a complete illusion museum, level one is going to have three of the simplest, most beginner illusions possible. Now, you may be wondering, how can an illusion be simple? Doesn't it have to be large and super intricate? Three crafting tables. That is all you need. I think my love for illusions starts to show here. You don't actually need a lot to completely trick your mind. Before we can move on to any other illusions, though, I need to actually decorate this hallway. I'm really liking how this design is actually coming together. And actually, while building, I had the cool idea to use stairs to mark out a viewing spot. You stand, like, in the center of this square. Optimal viewing range. The next illusion, however, is going to be a design so complicated that it hypnotizes you into pressing the subscribe button. It's a glass block. But not exactly. I want to make it look like there's an entire world inside this one glass block. Sounds really confusing. I know. The way that I'm going to do this is by digging out a huge area behind the glass block. No. No, not a water cake. <laughs> Am I finally got the dimensions right? Yes. Look at that baby crafting table in there. After a lot of trial and error, I have finally dug out this really weird shaped hole. Oh, that's weird. I have exactly enough materials to build a meep statue. Isn't he just the absolute most handsome lad? Ever since I made a <clears throat> certain video, I'm basically required to build a sheep statue every project I do. That looks so cool. I'm super happy I managed to perfectly line up the edges. And now if you sort of just glance at it, um, it looks really confusing. The third and final level one illusion is actually going to be big enough that I need to place down a beacon. <laughs> Let's get to digging. Another water cave, and this time with my own personal baby zombie. Bro. Okay, I actually need to get sponges. Go. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. Go. Ah, sponges. Get this one. Ah, bro, bro, the amount of dead I am. 33 wet sponges, baby. The room is finally dug out. Now I just have to decorate it. Oh, why am I using this pattern again? Um, yeah, yeah it's to strip more log. 
this is the completed exhibit and room for the final illusion. Definitely a huge size step up from the first two. And with all this space, you must be thinking this is going to be the most intricate, insane, complicated illusion of all time. Okay, I promise never to do that bit again. But I'm only doing it to show you how cool it is that you can make an illusion this small and still have it break every law of geometry. From most angles, this looks like two crafting tables just floating and then like a random checkerboard. But if you look at it from this very specific angle in this back corner, all of a sudden, it looks like you have a crafting table and one twice the size. This is definitely my favorite one so <laughs> look far. At how cool Things had been going cool. well up to this point. But this is where the entire project would be flipped on its head. Okay, you might already know why you're here. This is the underground of the project I've been oh, working on. Oh, I got it. This is the perfect one. That's sick. Okay. Wait, why have you just put two? Oh, oh, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, this is actually sick. This is sick. Now that you've seen everything, what are your critiques? I'm gonna be real. If it's a Tazo build, it needs some Tazification, you know? There is no Tazo in this build. It just feels like a build. That's true, actually. I see no Tazo in this. Yeah. You just see a, a, an illusion triangle. There is nothing here that makes it look like you. You're probably wondering why I'm even doing this. Why would I bring Derapchu here to fully review a fun little solo project I'm working on? Well, I may love illusions, but there's another reason I'm even making this video. See, all the way before I began working on this project, I interviewed every single member, asking one simple question. What is the coolest build on the I'm server? I'm a big Wenzo fan. You know, his giant nether portal. Wenzo's giant nether portal. Wenzo's nether portal. I really like Mal. You know, Tazo, I think it might be uh, your base. Like the big chunk the thing. Rapture was <laughs> the only person that said one of my builds was the best. I want to see if I can make something all of the members would consider an iconic build. Something worthy next to the other insane projects on the server. And it's become clear that I can't just rely on illusions. I need to build something Tazo. Which means probably like an actually good looking. Plan is to upgrade both the surface and underground of the museum. And since I have a really cool idea for the Penrose Triangle entrance, we're gonna start with that after I collect the materials. Now, I want to transform the Penrose Triangle to have the three dimensions of Minecraft on each of its sides. But there's a major problem with this. In order for the illusion to still work, every single part needs to actually line up after adding all of the structures and completely terraforming it. And if not, the entire illusion breaks. Okay, the first face of the Penrose Triangle is going to be the overworld. And to start, I'm going to cover the entire side in grass blocks. How has it already gone wrong? The challenge with the overworld is that you have to successfully make this lower area and that look like it's connected. Finally, the terrain is done. It was difficult, but everything looks connected and nothing seems too this off. This isn't even the hardest part though, because now I have to add structures to it. The only issue is that having a house up here means that the entire right side is floating. I can't extend the house downwards because it'll break the illusion. The only thing I can do is have this inner support that you can't see from the viewing platform. Who would have guessed that it's difficult to build something that shouldn't be possible in our laws of geometry? With the river and small forest added, the overworld is done. It actually looks so good and the illusion still works. Was it worth the four hours of precisely placing everything? Um, now, I wanted to say yes in this moment, but this was proving to be way harder than I had anticipated. I had to meticulously place each and every block to keep the illusion from breaking. Had to replace that tree like five times. Impressing the server members was going to be hard. And when I started the nether, this became a lot more obvious. Here's me struggling to get the front and back wall to look connected. Here's me trying to make terrain way too complicated, so I had to break all of it. Here's me accidentally messing up all of the lava. No, 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 no
Please don't get in the water, please. Now, I actually had an easy time with the ruin portal. And if you're wondering how I'm supposed to light it. The server has a, has a plug-in. But I could not get the glowstone to look the good. The crimson trees were really difficult to the build. The nether fortress was too it big. Was orientated this intersection is bad. Bad. It looks bad. bad. The illusion is falling apart a bit. The terraforming has just caused this upper area to look so much larger than this, like, skinny area. If you couldn't tell, I was stressed. I mean, this was the hardest thing I had ever attempted to build, and I wasn't happy with the result. In my mind, this illusion needed to look absolutely perfect. Every single block needed to be meticulously placed in the correct position. Nothing can look bad. The members need to like this. It had been two days, and I had made little to no progress on making this project iconic. So I decided to do something else. Instead of throwing myself at the most difficult task first, I'm just gonna have some fun and make the level two illusion. The perfect stress reliever. Now, you may be wondering what level two actually means. Because level three is where you're actually gonna get to the geometry defying brain decimation. And level one was the basics. So where does that put level two? You'll just have to wait and find out, I'm afraid. The first difference from level one is just the size increase. I mean, for this next illusion, I literally need to dig out a 31 by 31 by 15 room. This room is actually so large that there is an entire cave that it goes through. And it goes high enough that it is almost running into the ocean. Thank God for haste two. <laughs> Okay, the room is finally dug out and we can start building the illusion on this back wall. And I'm making it out of white and black concrete that magically appeared here, what the heck? Okay, I've built the first half of the illusion and you can probably already start to see what's going to happen. Maybe not though, I don't know. It might not be that obvious. <laughs> but when I turn around, Yes! That actually looks so true. I think it's something about the center of these squares being larger and then obviously having the inverse of white and black. So yeah, level two is pattern illusions and this is the first one done. Now, I seem to have done the same thing I did during level one where I just immediately rushed to do the illusion and uh, the hallway just sort of looks like nothing. By the way, I'm still planning on upgrading the museum so that the hallway design isn't super plain and boring. And I'm already cooking up a super cool idea. Seriously, I'm, I'm cooking up like a five course meal. I'm just using the old design as a placeholder so I can focus on building the level two illusion. And that is the entire room done. I love the design of this room, man. The rings of light are both effective against mobs and they just look sick. I use Blackstone because it's pretty similar to Deep Slate and I had so much more. On a side note, this one illusion took longer than all of level one. Now, the second illusion is going to be even better, involving a huge redstone mechanism to allow the pattern to literally move. I'm also making it rainbow color. Each color is going to be next to each other, spiraling down the tunnel. Okay, this should be one loop done. I just need to copy this all the way down with it offsetting one every time. All of the concrete is now placed down. And it looks quite cool already, but you may notice something. Uh, it's not exactly moving. The next step is going to involve installing a super complicated piston system to rotate the blocks around. The only issue is that requires a lot of materials that I don't have. You'd be surprised, but all of these materials are for only two blocks. Pistons, there we go. And observers. This is actually quite satisfying. But with these all crafted up, it's time to actually start building the mechanism. And the way this is going to work is actually pretty simple. All it is is a line of pistons going all the way down the corner. The next thing is to place a line of observers parallel to the piston. And then, in case you didn't think this was enough observers already, you make another row of observers facing into the piston. This behemoth that cost me so many materials is how we are going to be rotating the rainbow illusion. Now I just have to build it three more times. I didn't think about the fact that the entire ocean was going to be in the way. I'm drown! I'm gonna drown! Go, 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 go! <laughs> no! Ah! Oh my gosh, I'm actually gonna drown. I'm actually gonna drown! If I wanna get this piston mechanism installed and then completely re-terraform this part of the ocean floor, I'm going to need to make some water breathing potions. But luckily for me, in an old video, I set up an entire ruining layer in secrecy. Down here into the secrets. 
I'm completely guessing while doing this. I mean, I know nether warts first. Do I have to do anything else? Oh, wait. I don't, I don't remember how to extend a potion. Which one? Which uh, one? It's probably redstone. I mean, power, maybe? I think it's actually working because I don't think water breathing 2 exists. I don't think they ever made a sequel. The only thing left to do is to rig up a redstone clock to basically cycle around and activate the observers over and over again in a circle. Which theoretically, should not be too difficult. Oh, torches might be something I should add. Ah! Just in case Tazo didn't learn the first time, he was taught once more that you should add torches to anything that there is not light inside. No more creepers for this guy. Okay, assuming I set up everything right, when I flick this lever, it should activate the system and get it ready for rotation. And when I flick it again, the room should start rotating. It's destroying all the torches. To be fair, I saw that coming, but it's working. Oh my gosh. It's very loud. To be fair, but this looks so cool. I think it's time to admit that there's another reason I made this illusion. This is probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. Sorry if I'm speaking loudly, by the way. These pistons are so loud. This guy, Miles, right here is kind of in a sub race against me. And I built this illusion to hypnotize all of you into hating Miles and unsubscribing from him. Please don't. Don't actually unsub for miles. I just really want to win the sub race to 500k. You must subscribe. Subscribe to the Tazo YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash at Tazo. I don't know what my URL now, is. Now, for the third and final illusion, I wanted to make something special. Level two has been all about patterns and two dimensional walls to create an illusion. And they look super cool, sure, but I think illusions can be so much more than that. I also kind of cheated with redstone to make the second illusion move. So, for this illusion, look at this, and this, and this. None of these illusions are videos, but in fact, images made to trick your brain into looking like they're moving. You may be wondering how I'm supposed to build this in Minecraft. Well, let me introduce you to a map, an item that can display a 128 by 128 image on a single Minecraft block. Using this website, you can convert any image into a Minecraft build that will show up on a map. So now I'm just gonna take my favorite moving illusion and put it into this website. Wha <laughs> so bad. If you can believe it, maps weren't exactly made for this. But after trying, and I'm not kidding, 20 different moving illusions, I finally found one that worked in Minecraft. Yes, that looks so good. And it only uses concrete blocks as well. The website actually gives you a blueprint of what you need to build, and I can use a mod called Lightnatica to load it in. And wow, this thing looks really cool and really large. I mean, I'm on my test world right now, but once I build this on the actual server and use a map, it will actually show up on it. And yeah, as for the materials for this thing, I literally just have to run this concrete duper on the server for like 30 minutes. It's that OP. I have no idea how it works, but all I know is that it dupes the concrete you place down 72,000 times per hour. We are up and running, baby. The one thing is that this machine is actually so overpowered that if you don't go through the portal in time, you will just sort of crash the server, so... What? 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 I lost everything, dude. I lost everything. <laughs> my gosh, dude, that is actually ridiculous. You may be wondering why this death is so important. And well, there's something I haven't been fully honest about. In the history of my entire channel, this is the most difficult project I have ever attempted. To achieve my goal of making something iconic, this build needed to be better than anything else currently on Outcast. And it just made every mistake feel so much worse. But why am I telling you this now? Well, earlier in this video, a death that literally lost me all of my items would have destroyed me. But when I started the level two illusions, I made it my mission to always do the first thing that came to mind and just have fun with it. And in this moment, I knew I had succeeded. New glitch discover, Dude. Dude, what? I'm actually in awe, okay? Let's just ignore the fact that I just lost all of my gear. How did that happen? Okay. At least we're getting concrete. Okay. It could be worse. I was just making jokes about the situation, and better yet, my boy Erasmus came to help me. Giving me the starter items I would need to gear back up. The final thing I had to do was gonna be an actual cakewalk, so 
God to strike me down and took everything. <laughs> Woo, now that I have all of my gear back, I can collect the concrete powder, solidify it with this overpowered machine, and finally build the illusion. Okay, just a few more blocks and done. Let's just hope no one randomly stumbles across this. We can finally add the final illusion to level two. And boom. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's not very large. That is sick. I'm super happy I was able to find an illusion that repeats. Because when it's three by three, it just moves so much more. I don't know why. I actually can't stop looking at it. It's so cool. And with all of level two done, I was actually feeling ready to upgrade the museum. And I'm going to start by finishing off the Penrose Triangle entrance. This is actually so cool. I think the effort was worth it. This is the best thing I've ever made. Anyways, gotta get back to work. I have invited five outcast members to come see my illusion museum. And they all kind of made an iconic build. Aeon with his redstone city. Beef. Bacon waffles with his rich island. Gizmo with his dirt castle. Miles with his nether perimeter. And Wenzo with his giant portal. Receiving the most votes in my interview. These players will decide if what I've made is iconic. And that's gonna be a definite no if I don't get this design upgraded. The museum's transformation will happen in two phases, all to help make it an iconic Tazo build. And phase one is using my favorite block palette. So it's time to get all of the materials. I just realized that I forgot my beacon. The first block I need for the transformation is diorite. The second block I need is calcite and oh my, this is like the largest section of calcite I've ever seen potentially. The final block I need to get is actually quartz. But if I mine for it, I'm actually going to be here until I die in real life. Luckily, there's a glitch I've actually used in past videos to get quartz a lot faster. The way this thing works is by basically keeping the villager trading menu open and then getting sent 500 blocks away because of the end game. Now I can buy the max trade, but when I go back, it's not X'd out. I can literally do this over and over again and get literally infinite quartz. 75 levels later, we've gotten all of the quartz to shulker boxes. I will say, great method, great farm, incredibly boring. I mean, that was maybe the longest 27 minutes of my life. I'm gonna start by transforming the walls in the central room. This already looks so much better. But you may be wondering, um, why did I get two shulker boxes of quartz? Well, I'm going to be replacing all of the stone bricks with quartz bricks. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This doesn't look that great. But that is why we have a phase two. I had a vision to make a Tazo themed white and blue complex, mixing my favorite blocks with blocks I've never even tried before. Warped wood, blackstone, and frog lights, which are amazingly difficult to obtain, by the way. You get them when a frog eats a small magma cube. Like who came up with Luckily, that? a farm exists for them. It's been a hundred minutes. I'm optimistic, whole bottom row is full. <laughs> this farm was difficult to build, but I mean, just look at how good the frog lights look. In my opinion, the best lighting block in the game. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just, that's such a cool design. Wait, what? Oh, like, I think it'd be so cool if I just had a line of them running. Oh, like, this is already looking so much better. Oh my god. This is like some of the coolest building work I've ever done. We do have a code red though. I've completely forgotten to fill in the blocks. You can th see through the stairs. The final thing I need to do is this middle section. And I'm using blackstone to have a huge contrast from the hallways to the illusion rooms. And soul lanterns match perfectly with the new color theme. This looks absolutely phenomenal. I'm so happy with this. Now I just have to apply this design to the rest of the museum. 
This block choice and design does not disappoint. I had to take some creative liberties for this room, and it still turned out so good. But that's nothing compared to the center room. I just love the use of the frog lights, especially for these. I've done the classic glass fade effect that everyone does, but I've made it look like it's actually reflective. And it looks so cool. And last but not least, up this nice spiral staircase is the surface. The entrance is a dirt house. And I will be taking my award now for the most hidden button ever made. The museum was finally upgraded. And it is, in my professional opinion, the best thing I've ever built. Can't celebrate quite yet, though. I still have to build the level three illusions. And they're going to be an entirely new ball game. The smallest of the three is literally this size down like 50 blocks. Run! Wait, what's happening? Go, go. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I've dug out a pretty large room and I have the viewing platform now. I'm going to be making the infinite waterfall illusion. The only issue is I have no idea how to actually build it. All I know is it's basically a loop that wraps in and then goes into itself. I have no idea how this is. So I know that the blocks need to like line up in the background and foreground. And what I know I need to do in some regard is line it up with the corner of the blocks. Okay, I probably sound like I'm speaking actual nonsense. The first step I need to do is to place down the final spot I want the waterfall to be, and then I can kind of build the rest of the illusion around it. So like loop around. Oh, uh, and if that's where it lines up, wait, this is not gonna work. And if we go to like over to here and then try to make it loop okay, back no, into itself, this has to this there. has to encapsulate and this is like the, the width of it lines up block? along the corner which is what we want that's basically the whole difficulty of this illusion is getting the waterfall look like it lines up perfectly with the foreground this is actually coming together a lot better than i was expecting but the actual difficult part is the blocks behind the waterfall i need to perfectly align the blocks even further in the background and make it look like it lines up with the blocks <laughs> oh my god. Place on a grass block. Let's see where that looks it's like. It's off at. by like half a pixel. On this side, though, it's an entire pixel off. I'm just going to test going at backwards diagonal intervals. Okay, so it seems like every block that you go backwards, it's half a pixel closer this to being perfect. Be perfect. This looks perfect. That grass block is perfect. I don't know how on God's green earth this jumble of blocks actually looks like something normal and if you're wondering how i'm supposed to make the water not overflow i did some testing on a creative world to make sure this was possible and minecraft is a pretty buggy game honestly <laughs> after patching up the room the first level three illusion is done i'm actually so proud of how good it looks however i sort of did the same thing as i've done with the other two levels where i skipped ahead to doing the illusion and the actual pathway to get there is not even done I thought I'd go for a more unique design for the level three illusions. Especially when you're coming from the over-the-top tunnel design, you kind of go through the forest, and now you're in a spooky blackstone cave. I mean, this is just perfect for the level three illusions because of how big they are. If you thought the first illusion was big, the last room was 25 by 25. This one is going to be 50 by 50. The ceiling, all of the walls, and the floor have been completely excavated, and all of, like, the cave entrances have been patched up. It's a perfect room. But it took me, like, three hours just to dig out what you're seeing right now, and all of the blocks in the middle also need to be removed. There's only so much this pickaxe can do. If I want to use TNT, I need to cover the floor and the walls in water so they don't get destroyed. That is all of the water placed down. <laughs> and it barely put a dent in the amount of blocks I need to remove. I cannot use standalone TNT to blow up the entire cube. I mean, this one layer that it removed took like all of the gunpowder in the server's gunpowder farm. So I'm going to be using uh, TNT dupers, if you, if you can believe it. Let's get to work and excavate this thing. After four long hours, the room is finally dug out, man. For context, digging out this giant room took an entire real life day. And I still need to build an entire mob switch, move the torches in the other room, remove the water, build the illusion. At what point was this project enough? I mean, it was almost time to show the members what I made. And it was just 
big task after big task. I've put so much time into this project that I can now make any illusion with no references, no creative mode. I need to stop trying to make every little thing perfect. Think about it. I've made so much in this project. All of the illusions, the super sick museum design, the Penrose triangle entrance. I mean, come on. I have so much to show to achieve my goal. A little torch spam isn't going to hurt anyone. I decided not to worry about all of those useless time consuming tasks and just built the second illusion. And honestly, it looked so cool with the water. The infinite staircase illusion is working perfectly. This was so much fun. I'm basically just pumped. I'm ready to go on to the third and final level three illusion, the final illusion of the entire video. And if you're wondering what it's going to be, <laughs> it's the Penrose Triangle. Do you really think I was just going to make this a fun little side project? I think it's time to uh, show everyone. We are coming up on what I've spent the past month of my life working hey, what on. What am I looking at? <laughs> what is this? Hang on. What's going on here? <laughs> it's definitely abstract. Welcome to my illusion museum. Oh, wait, that's trippy. There's I'm a sheep in a box. Oh, it's like a big crafting wait, table. Wait, 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 no, I can't look at that. that wait, hurt. how do you do that? Oh, that's sick. Oh, I just looked behind you. <laughs> Oh my god! Something about that is not right. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it honest with you, Miles. This was to hypnotize everyone to make me win the sub race. No. Everyone subscribe to Miles. No. no. I, need, I need. I need. Please let me help. Oh, me. what the hell? Oh my god! It's it's a train. <laughs> I think I know what the thumbnail of this video. Is. I forgot where like they connected. Rip all my brain cells. They're literally gone. After this. <laughs> yeah. this whole project has been a challenge to myself. To make something iconic to Outcast. And I wanted to ask you, as someone who's achieved this before. <laughs> Have I actually succeeded? I mean, we have so many iconic things already. If something was the best build, a week later it won't be. But if your goal was to make your first iconic build, then I do think you've done so with this. This was really sick. It, it hurt my eyes. It's really unfunctional and disgusting from every other angle. But from this specific angle, it's perfect. I mean, yeah, look, it look I, I like it. I guess. I'll pass the torch. Oh! This is by far the coolest build I've ever Wenzel's seen. Wenzel's portal sucks. It actually <laughs> sucks so bad now. I changed my mind in everything. Yeah.